All right, thank you, Atilio. And uh, um, just before I start, I would like to thank the organizers and AB Biotech for um, allowing me to present to you guys today our research at the AWRI. So, um, yeast associated with winemaking uh, originate from the vineyard, particularly the soil, the bark, and the surface of the grapes, but they also originate from the cellar. Uh, so yeast um, living in the cellar equipment can actually ferment fresh grape juice and um, carry out uh, alcoholic fermentation. But how many yeasts are there? And how uh, diverse are those kind of yeasts? So this figure shows all, all the yeast spe species associated with uh, winemaking present in the vineyard and in the cellar. As you know, Saccharomyces is the key yeast um, which converts the grape sugars into alcohol and is indicated here on the black um, circle. So this figure is organized according to taxonomy, so all different species, genera, and classes um, under different colors. So you can see there are hundreds of strains or yeast species uh, present at one given time during fermentation. Uh, most of these strains, though, or yeast species, will die off uh, during the first couple of days of fermentation. Um, some others, for example, these uh, two different genera here, Hanseniaspora and Mechnikovia, can survive for a couple of days, but as uh, ethanol starts to accumulate, they will die off and are not able to finish fermentation. Similarly, other genera uh, suffer the same fate, with some of them, particularly Torolaspora, uh, being able to tolerate higher concentrations of alcohol and stay alive a bit longer. As you know, Saccharomyces, particularly Cerevisia and Uvarum, are able to survive the whole fermentation process and actually um, stay there until all sugar is converted into alcohol. So yeast, of course, are converting the grape sugars into ethanol and CO2 and also produce some flavor metabolites that we can smell and taste. These strains, so these yeasts, also produce enzymes, as we heard this morning, um, that can release grape precursors and form, for example, thiols and terpenols that we can smell and taste in wine. Different yeast species and also different yeast strains can release or produce more or less of these compounds, and that's going to have a profound effect on the wine sensory profile. Just to give you a, quick a very quick example, this is a very early work that um, we did at the AWRI, looking at the sensory profile of uh, Chardonnay wines fermented with Cerevisiae. On the red side, uh, sorry, right-hand side, we've got positive sensory descriptors. On the left-hand side, not so positive. So if we ferment the same grape juice with Candida stellata, for example, you can see some very negative um, sensory descriptors coming up. The use of Hanseniaspora um, uvarum, for example, gives a very different profile, and using Lachancia thermotolerance, uh, we can obtain a more balanced, very positive profile. So the take-home message here is, starting from the same grape juice, using different yeast, we can obtain different wine styles or different wines altogether. Alcohol um, in Australian red wine has increased since the late 80s um, to a point in two 2005 or 14.5%. After that, alcohol sort of dropped a little bit, but as you can see here, there are plenty of wines with alcohol concentration over uh, 16%. So what's the issue with having more alcohol in your wine? Uh, there is what we call the sensory issue. Sometimes alcohol can block, mask wine flavor and aroma and give just that burning sensation in your mouth. There is an economic issue. In some countries, uh, wine is taxed according to alcohol concentration. The more alcohol, the more tax that you pay. There is also the issue with wine uh, enjoyment and wine abuse, and especially there is a big push by the World Health Organization on uh, being able to provide to customers and consumers um, wines with lower alcohol concentration. From the technical point of view, more Alcohol in the wine is generated from uh, grape juice with high sugar concentration, and that can affect yeast metabolism, causing sluggish and stuck fermentations and economic losses for producers. When we started this project a few years ago, um, 
and this figure shows all the yeast available at that point in the market, had a similar ethanol yield, which meant that from the same grape juice, they pretty much produced the same amount of alcohol. So we wanted to find a yeast that was able to produce less alcohol, and we focus on non-saccharomyces, no conventional yeast. We look at 50 different yeast species, or yeast, yeast strains in this case, and we look at uh, two different conditions, anaerobic conditions and also um, aerobic conditions, adding oxygen or air to the mast. And we did this by sequential inoculation. So you know, cerevisia is very effective at transforming grape sugars into alcohol. We wanted to find a non-saccharomyces strain less efficient at that conversion. Uh, since non-saccharomyces cannot finish fermentation, some residual sugar will stay there. And at that point, we will inoculate with a strain of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, finishing the fermentation, and uh, hopefully um, producing less wine, less alcohol in the final wine than using Saccharomyces cerevisiae alone. So out of those 50 different strains, uh, using aerobic conditions, we found three very interesting strains that under two different aeration conditions reduce alcohol concentration by 1% in one condition and 1.6% in another condition. This was done with the sterile Chardonnay juice. Of course, the addition of air affects yeast metabolism and the production of volatile compounds. And very, very quickly, I want to show you how those uh, volatile compounds, esters, alcohols, and volatile acids change according to yeast strain and air addition. Just very quickly, um, you can see by this color a very high concentration for this strain of uh, pulcherima under high aeration conditions. So even though we can lower alcohol concentration, there is an effect on flavor, and sometimes that effect is not positive. So we have to keep that in mind. Another way of looking at this data is trying uh, what we call a principal component analysis and try to group and associate um, the different treatments altogether. I just want to point out how different the wines uh, produced with Mechnikovia pulcherma look to other wines and how these wines will change according to aeration. And that is also true for Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The next step in this area is, of course, doing a pilot scale trial and uh, evaluating the sensory profile of these wines with less alcohol concentration. Now I want to focus on anaerobic conditions. Again, from those 50 strains that we started characterizing, we found only one, um, and this is a different strain of uh, Menchelkovia pulcherima, that in Chardonnay was able to produce nearly 1% less alcohol, and this is, when I say 1%, is from 15% alcohol to 14% alcohol. In Shiraz, we found uh, a decrease of 1.6% alcohol using a combination, again, sequential inoculation of uh, pulcherima and cerevisiae. The main difference uh, in this trial was um, Shiraz was non-sterile. By looking uh, in more detail at the um, yeast populations in that particular case, we could see here in blue um, the pulcherima strain that we inoculated stay alive until six days after inoculation. After that, here in green, you can see um, <coughs> a strain that actually dominated the later stages of fermentation and actually finished fermentation. That strain was not cerevisia in this case, but it was uh, Saccharomyces uvarum strain. When we look at the uninoculated control in this experiment, we found the same strain here in green uh, dominated throughout uh, fermentation. So we actually isolated that strain and put it together with uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae and we compare the alcohol in uh, sterile Shiraz. Both strains, Pulcherima and Uvarum, were able to reduce alcohol concentration around 1%. Um, but very, very interestingly, when we put both of them together, we actually observe a 1.8% uh, decrease in, al in alcohol. It seems that these two strains were having an um, adding effect, a decrease in alcohol concentration. The next step at this point was, of course, um, 
go from the, the lab into a winery and try these strains at pilot scale. In this case, we change um, the try a little bit. Pulcherima stayed uh, as a sequential inoculation treatment with Cerevisiae, and Uvarum was inoculated on its own. And this was done in um, Merlot juice, tried with Belcorin, just to give um, Mechinacovia pulcherima the best start and not to compete with the native uh, microbiota in the juice. So what we, what we saw on ethanol concentration was, of course, a 1% decrease um, for pulcherima, 1.7 decrease for uvarum, and the uninogulated control also show a small decrease in alcohol. When we look at, again, these populations, and we did this with metagenomics, we've got here on the left corner the Cerevisiae inoculated control. We've got the uvarum control on this side. At the bottom left is Pulcherima, and the uninoculated control um, on the right. So take home message. Uh, you can see these populations are very different in all the controls. And in the case of um, three of these treatments, Saccharomyces cerevisia here in light blue, dominated uh, the later stages of fermentation. Um, Pulcherma, here in dark blue, stay alive only in the first couple of days of fermentation. And in the case of Uvarum, here in dark red, uh, it actually took over from the middle of fermentation to the later stages. We again look at the volatile composition of those wines, and we obtain a very um, interesting grouping of the different wines. So in terms of um, volatile composition, Cerevisiae and Uvarum are quite different than uh, the Pulcherima and the uninoculated controls. But the key question remains is what is the sensory, the flavor of those wines like? So we did a sensory study with those wines, and here in this radar plot, we've got all the sensory uh, attributes, including color, um, aroma, and flavor that were different between these wines. So as a summary, uh, here in red, we've got the Uvarum wines. Uh, Cerevisia is there in blue. And you can see on the left-hand side, particularly um, banyar aroma, meat, and vegetal aroma were not particularly pleasant to have in a wine. So even though uvarum could decrease ethanol concentration quite a lot, it doesn't give a very good sensory profile, at least in Merlot wines. Uh, on the other side, and this is what um, it was very, very interesting from our point of view, uh, Pulcherima actually uh, generated wines with high color, color purple, and it had increased scores for fruity aromas, particularly red and dark fruit, and also dark um, fruit flavor. So up to this point, everything we did was with uh, yeast grown in the lab, and the particular sensory descriptors that uh, Pulcherum was able to increase in those wines actually uh, called the attention of AB Maori, or AB Biotech, and they wanted to do more research uh, on this particular strain. And I think Anthony will uh, present to you some of those results later on. So just as a summary, uh, we saw that non-conventional yeast show a great potential to reduce alcohol concentration in uh, aerobic and anaerobic conditions. Um, under oxygen or aeration conditions, is, um, strains that we tested show a very interesting and promising volatile composition, at least in Chardonnay. As I mentioned before, even though uvarum can be very effective at, at decreasing ethanol concentration, the sensory profile, at least in Merlot wines, is, um, or it was not very pleasant. We need to check if that's the case for all the grape varieties. Finally, um, Pulcherima show a very interesting uh, sensory profile on those wines and also showed a decrease in alcohol concentration. I would like finally to acknowledge and thank um, the Australian government for funding and our collaborators in um, Santiago, Chile, in Tarragona and Spain, um, in Germany, and also here, um, Dr. Maurizio Ciani and, and Laura Canonico. Uh, if you want some more information, you can have a look at the recorder uh, presentation later on and find more information. Thank you.